what approach I use to doing uh, commercial work or fine artwork. I think there's, there's several approaches. I mean, you know, I've been painting now for 38 years and I think, yeah, sure, I would say so. Um, if you do, you know, to just be right, be direct, uh, commercial work, you're working for a client trying to, you know, you know, do a job professionally as you can and you're doing exactly what they want. So uh, a lot of times you have to use, um, I would say things that you might have learned in art school or things that uh, have been in the traits for a long time. You know, uh, like, you know, if you're painting a portrait, for instance, you, you would use the, a grid technique. You know, um, you might use a projector. Um, you might use a, a chalk line. So in the commercial world, you use a lot of things to do the job in the best of your ability or beyond your ability. I think when, you, when you're doing fine art or you're doing yourself, finding yourself as an artist, not that you don't use some of those uh, traits, but you, you tend to be a little bit more free or because you could make a mistake, but then that mistake becomes part of your style. Some might call that funny. Or, you know, let's say, uh, you know, um, because, because, you know, this, everyone has these mannerisms, right? And these things that you do, uh, meaning me, that a lot of guys might not do, that's not correct in, 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 in creating, you know. Um, no matter how hard I try to get that line straight, it might not be straight. No matter how hard I try to do an arrow, like the next guy, the guy that inspired me, the guys that I'm looking at. But but because 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 the way I'm born and where I'm from, and and maybe that guy was lefty, but I'm righty. I can't get that arrow like him. But then but then that arrow, those faults become your style. You know, obviously you don't really um, learn these things till way later. You know, you know, you spend 10 years doing something, 20 years, 30 years, you begin to look back and you see a lot of things. And also those, those mistakes, you get better at them. They're, you're still making them, but you've refined those mistakes. You're, you're trying, you know, you're trying to find something. You know, I mean, in the, be in the beginning of just writing and, and painting my name and then evolving it into, uh, you know, something that was really traditional and good in the 80s, you know, you, you copied other guys. But then at, at a some point, you know, uh, even though back then it was forbidden to copy, people would say, don't bite, don't bite my style. That was like a saying, you know, um, and, but, but people would bite. I would bite, other people copied. You've seen people on the stations with their pads. You didn't know who they were, but when the train pulled in, they, they were copying. So if, if, you know, I would, I would say very rare writers can say that they didn't, they didn't copy. But even within copying, you don't want to infringe on somebody's style so much that it looks like this. You still, you want to copy because you like their work, but as, in some way you still put um, something, bring something to the table, so to speak. In, in, I think in any genre of, of art you know, or, or sports, what are you going to contribute to the, to, to the end game? The end game is to, is to, to bring something um, to, the, to the art form so the next generation can go, oh, I really like really that he did. Mm. You know, I like that. Mm. That was cool. Mm. You know, people said that was a mistake, but I like that, that mistake, you know. And, and then maybe they improve on that. And hopefully mm. they improve. We would hope so.